Good evening, this is Katherine Potter, Associate Trainer with Art to Ride, and I'm doing a video critique for Celia out of Norway of, with her horse Staro Hit, who's a 10 year old Norwegian warm blood. Sylvia has been riding for only four years and rode last week with Will on her, very successfully, on her beautiful Iberian horse. Uh, Staro is a 10 year old who was a stallion till he was four and became Celia's horse in October 2015. He's had some past uh, to overcome and some injuries since she took him on. So she's doing a little bit of rehab and showing that to you right now and settling into his new home. So until she found Art to Ride, it sounds like the instructors were doing the typical ride on a short rein, and he wants to, he's asking constantly, as you can see here, for the rider to release his head so he can balance himself. I spoke to Will briefly this evening and um, mentioned that I was going to be completing this video critique for Celia, and he said uh, just to say that she really has got it and will just continue to improve. I, I'm shocked at how well she's riding after only four years, and she's doing a great job with this horse. A little difficult, especially in my video program, to see the far away shot, but trying some trot pulls, and he seems to be negotiating things very calmly and relaxed here back in September 2016. I believe she had started Art to Ride by then. And gorgeous countryside. <laughs> I think we've seen some other videos from Celia that have just been stunning. He's got a lovely bouncy trot already, even though he's not really stretching down yet. But he's obviously happier than he was in that initial still shot we saw at the beginning of the video, where he could see his um, just totally downhill. If you put a line across the main, you know, shoulder to hip, he would have been at a 10 degree angle. So she just had some injections done. Oh, I guess she actually didn't do Archeride until after that video and the injections. So hopefully those will be your last injections, Celia. We can, uh, we've seen Will has uh, testified to that for years. And I've never had to inject my horse. And he's 18. He certainly probably would have been if I continued as well. This horse jumped 1.2 meters when he was still a stallion until he transitioned into a dressage horse for a couple of years before so you bought him and but he was so difficult to communicate with because of he didn't want you hanging on his mouth <laughs> that the trainers gave up on him just a lovely horse though you're going to have so much fun with this guy and look at how nice and relaxed he is here on the lunch line I'm sure now that you've been to a clinic with Will that you can do a lot of this critique yourself. So uh, I like the use of the Shambone, of course, so he's really getting the idea. I guess I would suggest, and I'm sure you're doing this now, starting with some work in hand. If you um, have the skill yet, it, it is a skill and it takes some time. It can be quite frustrating. 
to learn work in hand right off the bat. So you're kind of just letting him set the pace here, which typically doesn't work very well. Um, and I'm sure you're, you'd agree with me that a little more pace and focus on the work and he's just sort of walking you <laughs> a little bit instead of you walking him and, and a little more contact with the line. So, the, you know, lunging is a skill as well. And I think once you start doing some work in hand, you'll kind of get the feel for how much contact you need with the line and with the reins. He's just sort of wandering on his own here and luckily naturally going into a stretch, which is fabulous. I mean, you've got a really good start here with him. Is And if he got a little bit more direction from you and consistency, I'm sure you're already seeing huge results after the clinic you were in with your other horse. But he's so much happier, obviously. I didn't. We didn't get to see him tossing his head and being miserable before you got him, but certainly you did. And I think you're saying that you're seeing this is a different horse here. Not difficult to communicate with. And a little more communication from you, maybe a little bit more pressure to get him to actively step away from you with his hind end will create that wave. He's sort of starting and stuttering with his wave, tail to nose, because um, you're not as active as you might be. And I'm not, I don't think the Shambone is doing much for you at all, I'm sure. Will and you've got a chance to talk about that. So with that loop and the lunge line, he's going to be not sure what are we doing out here. Um, I guess I'm just going where I want and you're following me. <laughs> when you get the contact and create that triangle between the bit, your hand, and the whip pointed at his hind end, you can sort of be a little bit behind his center of gravity, like between the flank and the girth, depending on whether he needs to go more actively forward. But the slack in the line will emit, will be eliminated over time as you get more consistent with the contact. And he'll become more focused on you because you'll be talking to him every stride, you know, go out, come in, <laughs> um, a little bit more activity, um, slow down, pushing him out with his hind end. You know, there's a constant communication that's going on when you're lunging. It's not just walking around in a circle, which seems to be sort of the vague direction we're going right now. So I guess this is the first two weeks either after Arteride or after you had the injection, I'm not sure, or both. We sure are glad that you're here with us, and I'm so happy you got to go to the clinic. This will just kind of confirm, I hope, <laughs> some of what you learned, and with a totally different horse, because every horse teaches you something totally different. He's such a nice guy. I mean, it's hard to imagine him being obstreperous, and resistant and a little bit confusing to the rider. He just looks like such a calm, mellow guy with a great confirmation, and he's going to be amazing in another year. Very exciting to watch your progress. Again, just a little more activity here, um, and then you can start really asking him for the biggest walk. Like, I'd be watching him walking into the barn for dinner, or, you know, when he's, like, really interested in something, what is that pace? Because every horse is a little bit different. 
when you get an image in your mind of what his maximum walk is when he's really striding out, that's what you're going to be searching for in these lunge sessions, building his top line. His top line looks really good here. So he didn't get totally upside down, it looks like. Probably because he either got, you know, hurt a little bit or he was so difficult to ride that he didn't get ruined. He's got a really nice top line already. I mean, obviously that will fill out and he'll get a flatter fanny on either side of the hip. It kind of flattens out with muscle instead of being rounded. That takes a couple of years. Yeah, he, he thinks he's out in the pasture <laughs> and you're just hanging with him. So, um, you know, he's got like 23 and a half hours a day to do that on his own. So you can maximize your time with him to be teaching him to listen to your aids and work him, it's a incredible how much fitness you can build into the horse in the walk, but you have to make him actually really use himself because horses are so heavy, just the walk alone develops, that's really their main gait if, the, if they were a wild horse, probably 90% of the movement that they do per day would be walking and with their heads close to the ground, grazing. But they typically would walk up to 25 miles a day to water and back to green grass. So they're really built to walk, and when they walk with their head relaxed like that, they build up over the top line very easily because they're so heavy. They're just you know, weightlifting every time they take a stride, especially when you're giving them direction to move at a higher pace. He's just got a lovely bouncy trot that's going to develop beautifully. I think all the things that I pointed out about lunging will help you get that trot more consistent and active and stretchy. So he's not stretching at the trot there as consistently, obviously, as you'd like because the pace is too slow, so he's not really sure it's too slow for him to get the momentum to stay in the trot. He's not like resisting. He's just, you know, I'm too slow. I've got a big trot here and um, I need to go a little faster to use myself properly. And then that will, and then you get to his hind end out as you develop that skill. At the walk, you'll be able to transition that into the trot. But he's a fabulous mover. I certainly don't see anything here that would lead me to think he's got any issues. Oh, look at you. There you are at the working hand. Well done. That's very typical when a horse is learning work in hand and, you know, it's kind of the blind leading the blind a little bit at first. And he's got such a big walk, you're really going to have to motor to keep up with him. So sometimes if you can work on the leg yield, that slows them down a little so you can keep up with them and they have to work harder. So you'd be tapping him out on, on the circle with his hip while maintaining contact with the outside rain. A little readjustment here. But this is clearly totally right on the right, right track. You've got, he's already stretching. You're gone with the sham bone. You're off and running. This is just, you know, do this and repeat for a couple of years. And <laughs> well, it won't even take that long. You'll be in the saddle won't even need to do work in hand because he'll just get on. He'll get on and he'll just stretch because it feels so good once they really get the idea. And he obviously has gotten the idea here. 
No question. Excellent job, soldier. See ya, sorry. And as you, you know, get this down a little bit more, uh, typically I think you would have seen Will. He just starts and, you know, does work in hand until he's done or he's changing direction. There's no stopping and starting. Oh, that, that's a nice wave you're getting where he's poking his nose out when he's all the way down there. That's exactly right. Exactly what you're looking for. Lovely swing of the tail. This is really going to build some lovely top line. And, you know, unless, I, I assume that you're, like, struggling to keep up with them or you're losing contact or the rain. I can't see, but the maybe the rain is dropping down his neck. So you just constantly have to kind of lift your hand up like you're doing there without him stopping. There's something... I'm not sure exactly what it is, but there's something telling him to stop. And it's probably your body language. Or when you go to adjust the rein, he gets confused. So as you get more sensitive, you'll be able to adjust the rein. And if he's down, you know, fully stretched, there really isn't a lot of adjustment. Even if the rein kind of drops down his neck, as long as he's moving in the direction you want, I just leave it there. I, I, I'd rather have him moving forward stretching than have the rain in some perfect place, at least, you know, while, while you're learning the skill. Once you have the skill, then you'll be able to multitask much more easily. He already looks like he's got more bulk on his top line than me. Such a nice horse, Celia. What fun. I'm, I'm having trouble figuring out what exactly you're doing. Um... because it's not a lunge line. Maybe you are connecting the lunge line. I, I can't tell. We'll just um, relax and... <laughs> There's the lunge line. I see. Got it. He's so patient. What a good guy. My horse would be dragging me down the sidewall because he's bored. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, <laughs> it takes something. Yeah, that's April, all right. <laughs> they all go through that, right? That looks lovely. Yep, looking better all the time. Wow, canter good. Nice stretch at the canter. That's a beautiful stride. Look at that. Textbook. Look at the top line. See how flat he is over the loin and built up through the flank? Super. There's that lovely stretch down and flick of the nose with each stride. That's the wave. That's the beginning of the wave, although it actually starts with the hind end. But as far as, it's kind of actually the completion of the wave. So the, the energy comes through from the hind end, and it's when the nose is all the way down, it kind of pokes out with each stride to complete the energy. Then you know you're really engaging every muscle all the way from the tail through those little tiny muscles around the withers, that's what you're looking for. And that means that you're totally loose.
relaxed and engaged all at the same time. It's ideal. So again, I you know maybe he's being a little bit fractious. Um, so you know you're kind of tentative about getting him into his full stride at first. Maybe he needs to warm up a little bit. I would I guess I instead of having him warm up the, up at the trot, I would warm warm him up more at the walk, and then once he goes into the trot, kind of give him one circle and then he needs to start trotting out at his normal pace. I wouldn't let him make the decision because most stallions and, and a horse that's cut at four is a stallion. <laughs> he's a nice stallion, but as far as he's concerned, he's a stallion because all the testosterone, testosterone sets the tone. So there are certain behaviors associated with stallions that I'm very familiar with because I worked on the harness track for four or five years and every horse was a stallion, so or every male horse obviously was a stallion. He had like no geldings whatsoever. He'd never cut anything and this guy trained 400 babies a year to race and um, so I got really familiar with the stallion personality. Um, so you know, your tentativeness is going to be a signal to him that he's in charge. Now, he's super nice and, and won't take advantage, but, uh, it, you know, as you develop your skills, you're going to be able to get more out of him so that your workouts are more streamlined and clear for him because um, he gets a little bit like, well, I'm just out here playing with mom instead of this is, you know, this is, purposeful, we're going somewhere, we're building on something, that'll really help his sense of who's who's leading the herd, because he's certainly going to be fully willing to take over if, if he feels that you're backing off or letting him decide. I, I Not that he's abusing you in any way, but I just think it would improve it can only improve your relationship with him. They like to they like to have direction. They they typically would be bossed around by the alpha mare every second they're around her. <laughs> but any other time he's gonna try to tell everyone else what to do. So that's not unusual to have a horse jump into the canter um, if they're a little tight or just feeling good, which is always a good thing to see. And, you know, obviously you don't want to do too much with, of that. I'm not sure how big he is. I'm assuming he's like 16 something, 16 hands, maybe 16 two. He doesn't look like a Jagundo, but maybe you're super tall. I don't know. Um, but the bigger the horse, the sometimes, or, or the shorter the back, the longer it takes them. Um, to relax into the trot and a canner will release some of that tension and then they can focus more. So again, I'm sure that you watched a lot of lunging and how Will works a horse. And so if you're going to trot, you trot and you trot until you're done trotting. <laughs> um, there's not really much purpose in starting and stopping, it just confuses the horse. And then they, you know, again, he'll start taking over because of uh, having that stallion mentality. So this walk is not really purposeful enough to have much um, value for you or for him. So I think as a doctor, you'd probably be a pretty busy woman. And that 25 or 35 minutes that you're out there working, you, you want to maximize that because you want to be going somewhere. I think most doctors I know are pretty goal oriented <laughs> and it's, it takes a lot for you to find time to work your horses. So when you're out there, um, you know, have a clear objective, know what you're going to do before you get there, keep him going. Um, that is, 
she's a little bit confused by what you're doing. See him staring off into the distance. That's that's not really okay because when they do that, something they're not focused on you, and he could see something spook and come directly at you because he's actually turned away from you. So that's a little bit dangerous. Although this guy's obviously got an incredible temperament. I mean, really, really great horse. And going to be just amazing. He's already getting uphill there. You can see the development versus what we saw in the still shot at the beginning of the video where he was just totally falling on his nose, even though his nose was up in the air. Super happy guy here. Again, I don't think... I hope you don't have to inject again because he certainly looks comfortable to me. I never really saw anything that looked like he was sore to me. Even even before you found our to ride, I, I could have. We've will will often say you know it's bridal lameness, so it's very hard to nail down. And then when the horse gets into a full stretch, it all disappears. So it's, hopefully you'll never have to go there again. So great job, and you're welcome. I'm I. Uh, Sorry for this taking a little longer than I wanted, and you're well on your way, so yeah, good luck with Starro, and we'll be following your progress. Thank you. This is Captain Potter saying good evening from central New York in the wine region. I hope it's warming up there in northern Norway. Sounds like it was a little chilly.